number 26 in the hardback hymnal. Let's sing all three verses of this one. On our prayer list tonight, we've been asked to remember Pat Rader, Eliza Argenbright, Kim Hickey, Maddie Wheat, James and Peachy Boone, Juanita and Coleman Detheridge, Ron Argenbright, Joyce McComb, Gene Bopkins, Logan Mullins, Diane Bennett, Clara Wilson, and Brandy Meese. So uh, let's remember those tonight in our prayers. Number 26. I come to the garden alone while the
verse 17. As always, it is a privilege to be at the house of the Lord, to be with uh, my brothers and sisters in Christ here at Chester Ridge. It's always a privilege. It always uh, uh, is, is a great joy, and uh, it always uh, brings, uh, brings a lot of happiness to myself, and I hope it does to you, to be able to come to the house of the Lord to worship God. Uh, it, brings a, it brings a lot of happiness, and uh, it's one of the things that I am thankful for is being able to worship God. And uh, I know that as Paul is writing to the church here, he says, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. As we study these verses tonight, hopefully we'll be able to see why that we should be thankful and why that uh, not being thankful can lead us to all kinds of evil things, evil thoughts, and can lead us away from God by just not being thankful. And uh, you know, this this is what happens to a lot of Christians: is they're not thankful to God, and because they're not thankful to God, 
it, uh, somewhere down the road, something will happen to them and it will cause them to uh, uh, get to the point in their life where they're not thankful, they don't count their blessings, and uh, they leave God. They leave the church, uh, and, uh, and because of it, we find that it causes them uh, many harms and it causes their life to become darkened. And uh, as we uh, find here in our reading, uh, we need to always be thankful and be able to count our blessings. But uh, uh, before we go any farther into our study, these two verses stand out in this chapter, and that's the only reason that uh, I'm talking about these two tonight. And I know it's, it's going to take me forever to get through this, but uh, these two here stand out by themselves. And... Uh, and because they do, this is what we're going to look at tonight, and uh, hopefully it will be something that will be interesting to every one of us, and uh, it will help us to always be thankful, to always count our blessings, and to always remember God every day of our lives. So uh, before we go any farther, though, we have a privilege to go to God in a word of prayer. As always, we have many things to be thankful for. There's many sick, but uh, uh, as we look around the world, uh, here in this small community, we have many things to be thankful for and to glorify God for. So uh, let us go to God now in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Our God and our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for blessing us with another day. We thank you for all the blessings we receive from you each and every day. We thank you, God, for our health. We thank you for your love and for your son, Jesus, who came down to earth and went to the cross and died that awful death for the sins of the world. We ask you to forgive us of our sins. Anything we have said or done or thought of that has not been pleasing to you, we ask you to forgive us. We thank you, God, for this hour to come to your house and be with our brothers and sisters in Christ, sing songs and praise your holy name, and to worship you in spirit and truth. We pray at this time for the ones that are on the prayer list, asking for prayers, and for all the sick, wherever they may be, that has this COVID and all the cancer and just everything that's bothering them, everything they're sick with. We have to be with them and bless them and pray that the doctors will be taking care of them and give them the best care. We ask you to bless the ones, our brothers and sisters in Christ, the ones here at Chestnut Ridge, ones that are under doctor care and the ones that are if they can't be with us, just be with them. We pray that you bless each one of us and restore our health back to us and watch over us and keep us safe. We pray for the brethren traveling through this country and the foreign lands. Pray that he'll be safe and his family and they'll have what they need to spread your word and they'll continue with the good work and many will be saved. We know if we do this good work from your Bible, that we will be rewarded in the days of on, on Judgment Day. We just ask you to be with all the ones that are, are traveling and teaching your word and just bless them and pray that the good works will continue. We thank you, God, for this free country we live in. We pray that our leaders will always see we'll have this free freedom to worship you and that we will always take advantage of each opportunity, each day, to live that Christian life. And on the first day of every week, come out to your house, worship you in spirit and truth, and remember Jesus dying for us. We pray that the old people and the ones helpless can't take care of themselves. They'll always have somebody to look after them, take care of them. And for these little children, we pray that they'll always be watched after, be loved, and be taught about you. We pray that we'll live that Christian life and study your word and know your word and teach others about you and guard ourselves for sin and the evil will walk in and take over if we don't know what the Bible says and do what the Bible says. We pray we will always do your command and study your word and live that Christian life. We ask you to bless each one here tonight and watch over us and keep us safe. In your son's name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 
we'll sing the first and last verse of this song. Number 358. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When the Savior As uh, uh, Paul is writing to the church here at Ephesus, he, he reminds them of some very important things so that they can stay close to God and remain faithful to God. And the whole theme of the book of Ephesians is unity. Unity and staying faithful to God. Because during this time and still today, uh, it's hard for, uh, it seems, for people to stay united not only with one another, but also with God. And we have to stay uh, faithful in God's sight. We have to remain faithful so that we can uh, uh, honor God with our life and also uh, lead others to Jesus Christ. But we find in Romans 1 and 21 what happened to people when they were not thankful. We find here it says when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. They were not thankful to God, and we find uh, because they were not thankful to God, we find that they continued to get farther and farther away from God. As uh, Because they were not thankful, they continued uh, to journey on down this path of unthankfulness, and they got farther and farther away from God in their life. And we find in Romans 1 and 26 where finally God just gave up on them. He just gave up and because uh, they continued to think things that were evil, vain imagination, things that were empty or worthless. They began to worship the creature instead of the creator. And we can read about how that... Uh, how that the people of the, the Israelite people made calves and different images, uh, and they would worship these images, and they got completely away from God, and it was because, Paul says, they wasn't thankful. And uh, when we get to the point where we are not thankful for the things that God has blessed us with, you know, we're traveling down that path ourselves. And many today, it seems, they have a hard time even Christians, it seems, you talk to them, and they're not thankful. They're not thankful for the blessings that they receive daily here upon this earth. And as Paul wrote this, he wasn't just talking about our food and our clothing and a roof over our head. He was talking about the spiritual blessings that we receive daily by being a Christian. David wrote in uh, Psalms 116, 12, and 13, he says, I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. You know, do we, are we thankful for our salvation? Do we give God thanks for our salvation? But because if it wasn't for him, we couldn't be saved. If it wasn't for him, we couldn't be forgiven of our sins. If it wasn't for him, uh, we wouldn't have the promise of a home in heaven. 
David said, I, I lift up the name of Jesus because of my salvation. I lift, you know, he, he was so thankful uh, for the fact that he was saved. And, uh, you know, we ought to be thankful for our salvation. There's so many things that we should be thankful for. And uh, we find here as Paul is writing this letter to the church at Ephesus and also us today. And, you know, and, and a lot of people will make... Uh, uh, put a lot of emphasis on what Paul said or what Peter said or what John said. You know, all of this came from heaven. All of these words came from heaven. They came from God. And whether it be Peter that said this or John that said that or Paul that said something else, it all came from heaven. It all came from God. This word all came from God. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God where Peter said it or Paul said it or John said it. Uh, it all came uh, from God, and uh, uh, they're just uh, written here, uh, and man recognizes these things, but all of these can things came from heaven, and uh, they're all important, and they're all, we, we all need these things so that we can live a life that is pleasing in the eyes of God. Paul writes also to the church at Philippi where he says, and something that... Uh, we should write down somewhere where we can read it every day. He says, finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good, report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. And he's not saying, finally, I'm finished, but he says, from now on, since you are a Christian, he said, start thinking on these things. Start thinking on these things. Start thinking on these things that are lovely, that are pure. And this is the only place in the New Testament that the word lovely is used. And uh, he says, think on these things. Think upon things that are lovely, that are pure, that are of good report. And this is the only place where the word good report or the phrase good report is used in the New Testament. He says, think upon these things that are holy, that are just, instead of allowing our minds to be filled with all the, uh, the foolishness that goes on in the world, think upon things that are lovely. Maybe a, a brother or sister in Christ or somebody that has done a good deed. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, a person doesn't have to be so beautiful looking to be lovely. You know, it can be their mind, just the way that they live their life, the way that they conduct themselves every day. They may not have the, the most beautiful body or the prettiest face, but they have the most lovely mind and the way that they treat people. You know, when you see people like that, you know, you think about that person time and time again because of, of the life that they live. And, uh, you know, this is something that uh, we need to think about is our brothers and sisters in Christ and how, how wonderful it is to worship. You know, we can, we can think about maybe a song, how lovely that song is when we sing it and the meaning that we uh, get from it and how that it lifts us up you know, to think upon these things, how wonderful they really are, how lovely uh, uh, the meaning is, like amazing grace, or how great thou art, and, uh, uh, or the name of Jesus. You know, these are songs that, uh, that are so pure and that are so holy, that are so good. And Paul says, uh, from now on, try to think upon these things. And if we would do that, start our day thinking about things that are pure, that are lovely, that are just, just think how much better that our day would start. Instead of turning on the news and hearing about somebody that got shot or somebody that got robbed or something happened down the street, if we just started our day off with things that are lovely, things that are just, that, and the word just just means something that is honest, something that is true, and, you know, God's word. If we would just start our day off with things like this, 
Just think about our foundation and how much better our day would go. And Paul says, from now on, you know, this is the way that we should start our day. And if we would start our day like this, just think how much better our day would be and how much more meaning that our, that our life would have because we started it off with God and we started it off with things that are everlasting, things that we can read, things that we can prove, things that are honest. And, uh, you know, th- these are things that can help us all uh, in our walk upon this earth to be close to God. And, uh, and I believe that every Christian that truly wants to get to heaven they want to be close to God, or at least they should want to be close to God. Uh, the hope of, uh, of our salvation, you know, and this hope is not something that, uh, uh, that we think that we might achieve or that we think that we might have. This hope is something that is real and that we can see our name written up there in heaven. We can see our name written up there because we are a child of God. It's not just something that we hope for. It's something that we believe is going to happen. You know, a lot of people go around and say, well, you know, I hope I make it. You know, you know, that kind of hope is not a real hope. You know, we need to have the hope that we know that we're going to have our names written down in heaven and uh, we're going to uh, walk the streets of gold someday. This is the kind of hope and this is the kind of joy that every Christian can have. And, uh, and this is something that we should think about. We should think about our spiritual health. You know, how is our, how is our spiritual health? How is our spiritual welfare? Uh, you know, I know we're all time thinking about uh, our uh, financial welfare. How often do we think about our spiritual welfare? How often do we take count of our spiritual welfare? And if our spiritual health is, uh, is well, you know, that's something to be thankful for. That's something to be thankful for, and we should be thankful for that. Our brothers and sisters in Christ, we should be thankful for every one of them and how much they mean to us and how wonderful it is uh, uh, to be a part of the family of God. You know, when we sit down and start uh, thinking of the things that we can be thankful for, you know, it's going to help us in our life. It's going to help us when we are uh, feeling down, when things don't go our way, uh, when we're discouraged. You know, if we think upon those things that are pure, that are holy, that are just, it's going to lift us out of those uh, uh days that uh, we start treading down or we start uh, drifting from God, we start thinking about those things that are just, that are pure, that are holy, that are good. Uh, it's, going to, uh, it's going to lift us, it's going to lift us up and get us back on the right direction. And we need to be thankful because these people we find in Romans the first chapter, they continued to think evil and they continue to be unthankful and God gave them up, and once God gave them up, they began to do all kinds of things that were evil. And that's what happens when people are not thankful. When they uh, look at themselves and they say, well, you know, I have nothing to be thankful for. You know, if we're a Christian, we have so many things to be thankful for. We have so many things to praise God for. And being able to pray to God and knowing that God will hear our prayers, you know, that's something to be thankful for. That's something to count our blessings for. And we should do that every day. And if we do that every day, as Paul said, from now on, you know, we're going to have a different outlook on life. And heaven is going to be something that it's not just something that... uh, like we do plan a vacation and we say, well, maybe we'll get a go. It's something that we are going to be able to achieve and be able to walk the streets of gold. When we really see how we are really blessed, you know, we're not going to allow ourselves to become unthankful. We're not going to allow ourselves to get to the point where we're no longer thankful 
because we have so much to be thankful for. And uh, uh, the material blessings, you know, we're not going to say, well, you know, I know they drive a bigger car than I do, or they live in a bigger house than I do. You know, when we get to heaven, all of these things are going to balance out. It doesn't matter what we have here upon this earth. When we get to heaven, the Bible says that we're going to have a home up there uh, that's going to be better and more beautiful than anything here upon this earth. And instead of looking across the road at what somebody else has, you know, we need to look up into heaven and see what we have. Because the Bible says if we lay up our treasures in heaven, the things that affect our houses here upon this earth or our cars or whatever, those things are not going to enter into heaven. Those termites that eat our house, the rust that causes our cars to fall apart, uh, the other things that go on in life, those things are not going to enter into heaven. So we have so many things to be thankful for, and we need to count our blessings, and we need to see just how really we are blessed so that we can be thankful, and we can show to the world uh, how really blessed we really are and why we are a Christian. And uh, because many today, you ask them why they're a Christian, and they, they, uh, you know, they act like they don't know. Uh, and they act like they're unhappy. And that they are really, uh, and, and uh, Christians like that, you know, I, I just don't understand them. I just didn't, can't understand, as Paul is writing here, I don't think he could either. And this is the reason that he could say, and even though he had very little of this earth's wealth, he said, I have learned to be content in every situation that I find myself in. And I can tell you why. It's because he had a home in heaven. That's the reason. He had a home in heaven, and he knew he was going there someday. And he had the confidence to realize that. He had the confidence to realize that and to know that someday he would be there. I don't know if, if Christians today don't have that confidence or they don't have that uh, real belief. But he said that he knew that he had a place in heaven and that he was going to enter those streets one day. That's the reason that he was content with whatever he had. And he was thankful, for, uh, thankful to God for it. Whatever blessing he had on this earth, he was thankful to God for it. And we need that kind of attitude so that we can be thankful. So that we can be thankful and understand how blessed that we really are and uh, not allow ourselves uh, uh, to go around thinking that uh, God has not blessed me or God, I have nothing to be thankful for. If you're a Christian, you have everything, everything in the world to be thankful for because if you're faithful, you have a home in heaven. And that's something that this world cannot take from you. You know, they may take, they may take a lot of things from you, but they can't take this home in heaven. They can't take your salvation. And this is what Paul based his whole life upon was his home with God. And he goes on to say, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. And this fear here means to show reference, to show respects, to honor. And uh, the word uh, submitting here is a military term. That Strong says is a military term, term referring to the lining up of the soldiers or lining up of the men, that they would follow the ranks one of another, one behind another, and they would continue that as long as they were marching. And, you know, that's the way that we do. We submit ourselves one to another, and that is that we consider each other. And uh, as we live and serve each other here upon this earth, we consider each other as to being as good as we are or better. And that's the way that as Christians, we need to consider our brother and sister in Christ. 
And if we consider our brother and sister in Christ to be uh, better than ourselves, you know, we're going to treat them the way that the Bible says that we need to. And, uh, you know, many will say today that, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to be a Christian. I don't want to be a servant of Jesus Christ. I, I want to be free. Well, the Bible says in Matthew 6 and 24 that you cannot serve two masters. You know, we're going to serve one master whether we uh, realize it or not or whether we want to believe it or not. We are serving one of the other master. We're either serving Jesus or we're serving the devil. But when we become a Christian, we find that we are submit to uh, one another in the bond of peace and the joy of love. And uh, when we do this, we find that we are being faithful to God. We also find where Paul writes in 2 Thessalonians 3, 6, and 11, where he talks about they are walking disorderly. Those that disobey God, they're walking in a way that... Uh, is not pleasing in the eyes of, of the Lord. And uh, when they walk disorderly, a brother or sister, uh, no matter who it is, no matter how long they've been in church, if they continue to walk this way, uh, they cannot be faithful in the eyes of God. And they cannot serve the Lord faithfully in, in this pattern or the, in this way. And uh, he says here, those that walk this way, he said, are walking disorderly. And uh, if a soldier walks this way, and this is another military ter term Paul refers to, uh, they get a dishonorable discharge. That's a soldier that has failed to serve in a way that is pleasing to the military. He's done things that uh, has caused him to be discharged with a dishonorable discharge. And, uh, and because of it, uh, uh, he will, he will not receive the benefits and all the other things that go along with being a faithful soldier. Well, the same is true with us. One day we're going to have to stand before God, and uh, if we have not served God faithfully and we've not been thankful, we're going to have a dishonorable discharge, or we're not going to be able to go to heaven. And... Uh, Paul refers to these terms as a military term, and he compares the Christian walk upon this earth to being a faithful soldier in the military. And uh, because he compares these, you know, it, it makes it for us easy to see because we understand these terms. Even though they're terms that have been used for hundreds of years, they're still used today. And uh, he says here, the reason that they uh, got to this condition or this state of mind is because they wasn't thankful. Because they wasn't thankful to God and they were disobedient and uh, they began to walk in a disorderly fashion. And he said because of it, they did not retain God in their mind, in their, brain, in their thinking. And uh, we find in Hebrews 3, 18 and 19, we also find uh, the Israelites, where the, uh, uh, Paul writing here says that these people here could not enter in because of unbelief. And uh, they couldn't enter into the land of Canaan because of unbelief. And because of this unbelief, it started from not being thankful. And... Uh, not counting our blessing and submitting ourselves to God. And uh, the way that we do that, I think everybody knows, is by obeying God's word. This is the way that we submit to the teachings of God, is by obeying his word, being faithful in his sight. And uh, uh, Strong defines this, uh, uh, this phrase, submitting ourselves to one to another. He refers to the phrase, is the attitude of yielding to one another. That is that we yield uh, to what the Bible teaches and not our own uh, uh, will, but God's will has to be done in all things. And we do this by yielding, as Strong says, we change our attitude. And once we change our attitude of being uh, selfish and uh, having our own way, we desire the way of God. And uh, but by doing this, we find that we become 
pleasing in the eyes of God. And we are able to uh, 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 have that home which God has promised. We have be, are able to uh, uh, be pleasing in God's sight is because we are willing to yield to the teaching of God. Paul also says in 2 Peter 2, uh, 9 and 10, he refers to this once again as yielding to the teachings of God, to the teachings of Jesus Christ, to the whole there is Ephesians. He says that these are things that, you know, that we must do to make sure that the church is pleasing in the eyes of God and uh, not to allow ourselves to think of ourselves greater than what we are or greater than our brothers and sisters in Christ. And, and this happens to uh, uh, many churches, many bodies of Christ, uh, uh, religious uh, folks all over the world. They allow themselves to think of themselves bigger or better or more important. And uh, instead of yielding to one another, they uh, think that they have to be first or they think that they have to be greatest or the greatest. And because of it, they're not willing to yield themselves, and uh, because they're not willing to yield themselves, the Bible says that they, uh, they are not able to be pleasing in the eyes of God, or they're not willing to yield themselves to the teachings of God, and because of it, we find that they are walking disorderly, even though, even though they may think that they themselves to be pleasing in God's sight, but we find here if they're not willing to yield, as he says here in uh, the 21st verse, submitting yourselves one to another means to yield in the fear of God. Just as, you know, we're to treat each other just as each brother and sister was Christ. If we, uh, if we treat each our brothers and sisters in Christ as each one of them were Christ, would we treat our brother the way that we do? Or would we treat our sister the way that we do? Would we say the things that we say? Would we act the way that we act? You know, that's what Paul is saying here. We're to yield just as if Christ was sitting here in, in among us. And in a, way that, in a way he is. But if, if Hayden was Christ, you know, I would yield to him. Because he's my brother, not because he's Christ, but because he's my brother in Christ or any other. You know, we're to do that and to do it out of love and to honor one another just as if Christ was here tonight. Paul says in Romans 12 and 10, he says, Brotherly love with honor, respect uh, the teaching of Christ, respect God's teaching and to honor one another through submission to one another and by doing this we show the love of God we show the love of Christ and uh, you know I know a lot of a lot of times people will say well you know if Christ was here you know I would be different or I would treat my brother different or I would treat my neighbor different you know we are we are supposed to, Christ is supposed to be living in each one of us and if Christ is living in each one of us the way the Bible teaches that he should be, then we're going to treat our brothers and sisters in Christ the way the Bible teaches. And if a brother comes to the door and we turn him away that he has a real need, and we say, no, I, I can't help you. I know you got a flat tire, but I can't help you tonight. Just uh, uh, you'll have to go to uh, somebody else's house. Or if a sister came to you and had a need for something and you said, well, I can't help you tonight, you know, that sister or brother is the same as Christ. And that's what Paul is trying to uh, uh, get the church here to see and for us to see today uh, is the way that we're to yield to one another or submit to one another in love. If there is a need, you know, we're to show respect to one another and care for one another. And if we do that, you know, the problems that arise many times in religious bodies because uh, uh, they fail to respect the teachings of God and the love that they're to have one for another would never occur. 
and it's sad that it does happen many times uh, over the years and many uh, churches are divided and uh, many things happen and people will say, well, what happened to her or what happened to him? Well, a lot of times they have maybe got, got their feelings hurt because of lack of respect, lack of love, or we didn't see that person as Christ. Uh, Hayden may have got his feelings hurt and nobody said anything to him. He left and nobody ever asked why and uh, because of it, you know, uh, and uh, he just never came back. You know, we didn't see him as Christ, but we need to. And we need to see all of our brothers and sisters as Christ. And if we would, we would treat them differently. If we would, we would be willing to listen. We would be willing to uh, yield to their needs and help them in any way we could because they are the same as Christ. Because Christ is our brother and the Lord. And we need to remember that. And uh, we need to be willing to submit to one another as if it was Christ. And when we do that, a lot of the problems that uh, occur would never happen. And we would always be thankful. We would always be willing to submit to one another. And we would always be willing to treat one another in the way the Bible teaches. And we would never have the problems uh, that many religious bodies ha have because they never see Christ as their brother or sister. They never see them that way. They only see them as Hayden or Paul. They don't see them as Christ. And because of it, you know, this is the reason that many things happen to divide the church and cause the church to have so many problems is we're not willing to submit to one another. We don't have the godly love and we're not thankful in the way that we should be. And we say that uh, uh, we have nothing to be thankful for. Well, if, we, if, if we're that way, then our heart has been blinded. And we're on that slippery slope away from God. And we need to be careful. Or we could wind up like the people in the first chapter of Romans. If we've never read that, we need to read that and see what sin can do over a period of time and how that it can lead people away from God and how terrible people get when they get away from God. And it just starts a little at a time, but we see how terrible those people got when darkness entered into their life and took them away from God how terrible their life became. And that's what can happen to us when we become unthankful. When we get to thinking that God has not blessed us, that God has not uh, 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 helped us through difficult times in life, and we think that uh, uh, we, we are the worst, or we've been treated worse than anybody else, if we're not careful, we're headed down this path. And uh, if, we, if we don't look up, and I'm not talking like the athletes on TV that score a touchdown and go, you know, I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about those who are sincere in their walk upon this earth, who look to God at all times for everything. You know, those are the ones, those are the ones that count their blessings. And we have so much to be thankful for. We should never, we should never get to the point where we think or allow ourselves to uh, even consider the thought that we're not blessed as Christians because we are blessed more than anyone else here upon this earth. And, and it's not about what we drive. It's not about where we live. It's about the spiritual blessings that we receive in Jesus Christ every day and the promises that God has made to each and every one of his children 
and that any time that we call upon him, we know if we are faithful, he is ready and willing to listen. That's the kind of father that we have. And that's the kind of father that we, uh, that we should uh, uh, call upon from every day. And maybe even more than once, once, twice, three times a day. And if we would, we would always be thankful. And we would always be able to see our blessings. And to see how wonderful it is to be a child of God. You know, maybe there's one here tonight that is not a Christian, but wants to be one, that he can count his blessings as being a child of God, being able to pray to God and God will listen. Uh, all, we ha uh, all you have to do is to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, repent of your sins, confess the name of Christ, and be baptized. It's that simple. It's that simple. And... Uh, uh, anyone can do it that, that uh, really believes, uh, that is old enough to believe, they can do that. But maybe there's one here tonight that's done that and uh, they feel that they're headed down this slope away from God, that they've got to the point where they're not thankful. They're not thankful the way that they should be. They've got to the point where they, can, they can't count their blessings. Darkness has entered their hearts and uh, led them away from God. You know, if you feel you need to come back, why don't you come back tonight and uh, have the prayers of the church. You can be restored back to the family of God tonight, and you can be headed back on the right path. Listen, if God is calling you through his word, and that's how he calls today is through his word. He's been calling that way for many years. And many people have responded. If you need to tonight, why don't you come while we stand and sing the song of invitation. I